What's going on guys, Garrett here from All Amazon. In today's video, we're going into wholesale. We're gonna show you exactly the process of how we find and source our brands in our wholesale business and how we reach out to them and open those accounts. So with that being said, guys, stick around for the video and let's check it out. So we're here in Keep a Product Finder and when we're trying to source brands to reach out to on Amazon for our wholesale business, the first step is really trying to qualify brand to brand and really get a sense of across the brand, across their listing, what's really going on, right? And so we use Keep a Product Finder. We could also use SmartScout as well. We'll get to that in a later video, but to really kind of accumulate the data across a specific brand. And right, so the filters allow us to generate results according to a specific listing which we can then assimilate across that brand and then use that information to reach out to the brand. So we'll just start with some, some basic filters as usual. We'll create a sales rank filter of, we'll call it one to 50,000. Again, as we layer these filters, our results down here on the right are getting smaller and smaller as we go, which is what we want, right? We're trying to drill down to our results, um, our results portion that's, that's manageable, that's small, it's data size that we can handle. We'll set an arbitrary buy box of, of call it 15 for two reasons. One, we're using prep center. So we want them extra profit in there to go to the prep center because they obviously prep our products. And two, we just want to be sourcing and looking at products with a buy box, right? That shows that they're in Amazon's good graces and that they're getting favorable treatment from Amazon because that buy box is activated. Uh, we will filter out Amazon being a competitor on these sorts of listings. If we're going in on wholesale, if we're going in and after a specific brand, we just really don't want to be dealing with Amazon in that equation. And then we'll scroll down. And this is an important one when it comes to wholesale. We're going to set a three star rating minimum for our products when we're looking for brands to reach out to for a very specific reason, because we're trying to minimize, minimize and mitigate returns, right? If we're trying to, if we're reaching out to brands with one or two star rated products, Idea, chances are that those products have a higher chance of getting returned than say a four or five star product. So with this filter, we're only bringing back products that have a three, four, five star rating. Again, just really trying to increase the chances that and minimize uh, returns for these specific products. We're going to add another one and it's going to be offers, right? So we're going to come down here to FBA. And we're, we're going to set a minimum of four FBA current offers. This is really geared towards trying to minimize and eliminate looking at uh, private labeled products, right? If we're looking at a product that's, you know, one or two sellers, likely the case is that it's private label. We're not going to go and reach out to them and, and open, try and open that brand. <clears throat> Alternatively, right, if these listings and products have four, five, six, seven sellers, well, there's a lot better chance that it's not private label. It's open for negotiation in terms of coming on to sell that product. And we're setting ourselves up for success there. Furthermore, right, if we see flat lined buy boxes with four, five, six, seven sellers, there's a very good chance that those flat lines are mapped products, right? A minimum advertised product. It's a wholesale term, meaning that the brand is really just dictating what that specific price can be priced at on the open retail market. Right. So again, that's that's alternative to a private label product that's also flatline, but that's just because there's one or two sellers selling it. Right. So we're going to set this minimum FBA offer count to four. And I think that should be all of the filters. We're going to add one more, but I'm just making sure we hit all of the main ones that I wanted to. Yep. And so then we're just going to come down here for two category and filter inside a specific category. The reason why we do this is, is when we reach out, when we do our outreach for outgoing, um, for, for brands, we want to batch those, we batch them, right? And so we batch them within categories because we, um, cater our outreach, our template to that category to make it more brand specific. We also cater our website with products listed on our website and, and just, we, uh, we cater our outreach to the brands that we're reaching out to. And to make that more efficient, we just batch those into categories. So say, for example, we're, we're sourcing automotive leads the next couple of weeks. We're going to cater our template and our messaging and our communication to the automotive industry, again, increasing our chances and just making us more well-rounded 
as we reach out to these brands, right? So we'll use that as an example. We'll go with automotive. And you can see we're down to a thousand products with our results that have a sales rank of under 50,000, no Amazon competition, buy box of minimum 15, three star rating across the product. And all, of course, more than four sellers, right? So what we did is we created a subset and a results of individual products that are really catered to the sort of data and results that we're looking for. And now all we're really going to do, we'll move this over here, is we're going to just kind of scroll over each of these products. And we're looking on that on the Keepa graph on the bottom right there, at the bottom right of the screen, it's going to show up here. And we're just going to try and, again, really get a general sense of what's going on with the Keepa graph, right? We're looking for oscillation. So this is a good one, right? So we're looking for, you know, consolidated activity with the buy box oscillation. We're looking for people going in and out of stock. We're looking for obviously consumers purchasing. We can see all of that when we see that sort of really consolidated activity within the buy box. We're looking for a, a consistent green sales rank line. We're looking for generalizations within a specific product, right? We're not, we don't necessarily care what the exact price point is because when we go and reach out to the brand, we're essentially going to name our price. So the fact that this is, you know, $17 as opposed to 20 or 25, that's not super important at this stage, right? Because now we're just qualifying brands. We're just really trying to generalize what's going on within the brand. We also aren't specifically, obviously this is windshield washer fluid, which is probably a hazmat product. So not something we're specifically interested in, but again, it's not necessarily about this specific product. We're interested in the brand or not interested in the brand, right? And so we're trying to generalize within the brand what's going on. So the, the keeper graph looks fine. One couple checks we do is we want to make sure there's no major holder of the buy box. 56% is not super, not super concerning. It looks like there's six people in the buy box. The other thing we want to do is we want to make sure that the brand isn't selling their own product, right? So we'll come in here and sell it. We'll kind of hover over the sellers and just make sure that we don't see press stone, which it looks like it's this brand on this listing. And it doesn't look like they are, they would typically be the top seller owning majority of the buy box. And that doesn't look like the case. So once we get to the listing, once we get to the keeper graph, we want to check those two things, making sure there's no authoritative and major seller of the buy box. And then one might want to make sure that there's no, these, the brand is not selling no product. If those two checks and balances pay out, or, um, um, pass. And of course the keeper looks reasonably good and there's, you know, general demand. We're just going to take this brand and we're going to just plug it into Google. And so we're going to look for pressstone.com. We're going to look for their branded website. And so this looks like it's it. Pressstone.com. Yep. That, I think we're in the right spot here. And then we're just going to look for typically on the bottom, there'll be some sort of either wholesale link or contact us page or something like that. So we'll click on the contact us and then we can just fill out this questionnaire in terms of, and just construct your template in regards to, again, the category, the industry, or the niche you're reaching out to. So we'll say something like, hello, this is Garrett from, from all our Amazon. And we're interested in buying your products at bulk. This is what we do. This is how we do it. These are where we sell the products. And this is sort of this sort of, um, the purchasing power that we have something along those lines, just essentially telling them who you are, what you do and, and how you do it essentially. And so that would be one. And then we just keep it moving. Right. And so we'll try and find a, a good one here and move this. Again, so we're going to, we're really just looking for that same sort of activity. This looks interesting. Again, not really over concerned with any specific price point. Um, we're just looking again for those specific generalizations. So not many sellers here. We want to make sure there's no dominant seller in the buy box, which there may be in this specific scenario, if we load here. And then we'll also, the next thing we'll do is we'll just check to make sure that the brand isn't on the specific product, which we can do that while that's loading. So it looks like master lock is the brand, uh, wholesale supply. So it looks like we're good there. The brand's not on here. Um, 74%, 26%. So this is a, a, a decent red flag. There's two sellers, one heavy, and there's 12 sellers on the listing. We'll see if they're all competitive. 
uh, reasonably competitive. Yeah, so we'll skip over this one. Too many sellers that aren't in the buy box rotation. And we'll just keep it going, right? And so we'll just keep, um, just kind of keep hovering over these, keep a grass. That one looks interesting. We'll click in here until we find, and again, the end result is we go to their website and we find some sort of wholesale link at the bottom of their page. We'll see if we can get one here. Keep a graph looks good. We'll make sure there's no buy box owner. That looks really good, actually. Ozium looks like the brand. We'll make sure it's not on here at all. Overstock looks like we're good. So we'll take Ozium and try and find their website. I don't know if that's going to... Some of the websites are a little harder to find than others. So is him smoking odors. Yeah. I don't know if they may not have a website. This may be a brand that someone owns. Um, so we'll keep it moving. Trying to find one for you guys where we can show you the entire process here. Wonder wafers, we'll check out here. But again, right, so we go to their website and then on that bottom of the page, that yeah, we're gonna skip over this one. There's gonna be, we're looking for ideally some sort of link to apply for a wholesale account or a dealer application or at the minimum, a contact us page where we can send them an email, give a phone call to the sales rep, find some sort of way as a foot in the door to reach out to them and try and, and, and plead our case, so to speak, to open their account. With that being said, guys, that is a process of exactly how we source and find brands to reach out to for our Amazon wholesale business. Hope you enjoyed the video. Feel free to uh, leave, uh, leave a comment, like the video, share it to a friend who also is interested in Amazon, and uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel for future videos. With that being said, guys, we'll see you in the next one.